Let's go back to Ryan. There's a verdict. Yes, uh, on the top charge of seditious conspiracy, at least four of the defendants have been found guilty. That is Ethan Nordeen, Joseph Biggs, Zachary Real, and Enrique Tario, which is actually kind of the one I was, frankly, uh, wondering if they were going to be able to get him on. Dominic Pozzola, I think we're still waiting on that to find out uh, whether or not uh, what, the, what the jury found there. Um, but those first four defendants, and that's just how they are listed numerically um, in, uh, in the indictment here, they were found guilty of seditious conspiracy. So chalk this up. This is a big win for the Justice Department, um, you know, despite some of our uh, the trepidations, I think, that were happening uh, just before this. Um, it's some of these other counts, I guess, that the jury is, is locked up on. And, you know, ultimately, that's not going to be one, as Ken sort of remarked earlier, for the history books. The top line will be here. Uh, that seditious conspiracy, uh, all, at least four of these defendants were found guilty uh, of that top charge, which was the big shot for DOJ here. So, you know, I'm sure there are, uh, there are a lot of smiles happening at that, uh, that prosecution table right now. Yeah, and Danny, I mean, the fact that Enrique Tarrio is one of the four found guilty on that seditious conspiracy charge, uh, it's surprising to many, but what's your reaction to this, Danny? Well, if you're the government, you've crossed the finish line. You can sit back because even as to acquitted conduct, you still may be able to get the sentencing court to consider that as relevant conduct. Yes, it's surprising, but even when you get acquitted on account, the sentencing court may still be able to take that into consideration uh, at sentencing as relevant conduct. So this is already, no matter what happens from here on out, a massive win for the government. Uh, it's surprising to me in that they are having any uh, delay, and the one that they uh, excuse me. The the delay came on uh, the seditious conspiracy. That's been resolved, but we don't appear to have an answer on what I thought were easier charges like destruction of government property. Uh, they may arrive at a conclusion there, or they may have already, uh, but uh, it remains to be seen. This partial verdict, though, under the rules, is permissible. You've got multiple counts, multiple defendants. It's allowed under the rules. The defense will object. That objection will not win the day here at district court. It probably won't win up on appeal at the circuit court. So this, I mean, all in all, is a huge win. If you had told me five minutes ago uh, what the verdicts would have been, I would have bet that they would have been the lower counts, the destruction of government property, anything to do with in, impeding a, uh, an officer, uh, not seditious conspiracy. That, to me, was the trickiest one. I expected the most difficulty with that lead count. And, Ryan, we have new reporting. Go ahead. That's right. You know, so on, the, on that secondary count of obstruction of an official proceeding, we also had a number of guilty pleas in that one. I think, honestly, you know, what was interesting here that the jury uh, hasn't apparently yet reached a verdict on is, is Dominic Pizzola. Um, and he's the individual who had that, uh, that shield, that uh, shield, and was breaking uh, the window uh, of, of the Capitol. So the person you would think who had the most exposure on, and this is why, you know, predicting juries can get to be a dangerous game, because you just don't know what exactly those disagreements were. But now that we sort of know that's what they were locked up on, on the on the Pozzola account, I can sort of explain what I think they were thinking. And Dominic Pozzola wasn't as involved in a lot of these chats as a number of the other defendants were in this case. So while he uh, while he used that shield and was part of this that day, and then you know communicated with uh, some of the uh, some of the Proud Boys, um, he was not as deeply involved in the Proud Boys, and in fact only joined the Proud Boys shortly before they actually ended up storming the Capitol. This was uh, sort of a last minute um, uh, decision for him to even come down. I think his his father in law tried to convince him out of it. Um, you know, he has, uh, he has a family at home. He was a, uh, a floor installer um, and had a business going that was sort of then shut down during COVID. Um, and uh, his, his family really didn't want him to go down. Ultimately, he did make the decision uh, to go down and was, in fact, one of the first people to break through that barrier. But it really can just show you how, you know, you get, when thinking about how juries are looking through this, sometimes, you know, reading the tea leaves can be very, very difficult. But now that we know that the Pozzola account is the one that apparently there's a little bit of disagreement on. Um, there is some logic to that that you can follow uh, from the jury here. But they had no trouble with these broader uh, these broader counts uh, reaching uh, on that charge of seditious conspiracy uh, against Enrique Tario, which, you know, for my money, I thought was the one that they were going to be uh, having a little bit uh, of, of, of trouble with here. And, you know, I guess I was wrong on that one.